When I made my video response to this fellow who thought that there's no such thing as marital rape, yeah, of course I didn't expect my video to be welcomed with open arms. But I wasn't quite expecting the sort of need for preparation age that this man expressed in the way he reacted to my video. That was quite astonishing. And when somebody responds in that sort of a gut knee-jerk reaction, it is always most interesting to look at the, their first response first, because that is usually made in anger and without thinking too much about what you're actually saying here. And then a few things come bubbling to the surface that you maybe not necessarily intended to bubble to the surface, did you? But let's listen to, for example, how he responded to my suggestion that whenever anybody is seeking sexual intercourse with anybody, including their spouse, they must always, always, always obtain consent. And this was his reply to that statement. And that was to say, are you just completely void of spontaneity? And it is mind-boggling what must be going through his mind to think that forcing yourself on somebody, whether it's through physical violence or by coercion or em emotional blackmail or any other type of pressure to get somebody to have intercourse with you even though they don't really want to, to equate that with spontaneity. That is mind-boggling. And also then, another indication of what his real attitude underneath all his attempts to try and look reasonable is, is when I suggested that it, if I ever got it into my head to try and force myself on my wife, if I ever thought that my urges are more important than her consent, that, okay, I put it a little bit, you know, hyperbolically, but that I would sincerely hope that she would have the good sense to castrate me in my sleep. Hey, colorful language is good. Um... His response was, I think you are already castrated. And again, this clearly indicates the sort of attitude that this man has. Obviously, in his tiny little mind, he thinks that being forceful, being persistent, putting pressure on the woman in order to get what you want, is some sort of sense, sign of manhood and accepting that she's not interesting and interested and backing off is being less of a man, being castrated. Okay, maybe I'd prefer to be a eunuch in that case. And then I think when he then calmed down a little bit and tried to put a more intellectual <clears throat> position forward, he made it very clear to me, after a couple of comments, that he seems to be quite obsessed with a perception. And he might even have a valid point there. Hey, it is possible that he might even have some kind of a valid point to make here, that men are being treated unfairly by law under circumstances such as alleged rape and marriage and other such situations and his his bee in his bonnet is a case that apparently happened a while back in France where a woman got awarded compensation for having to endure 21 years of a marriage without any sexual intercourse whatsoever and she sued her husband for this and got awarded about he says 60,000 but without any denomination so I don't know what currency he is used in dealing with, but it was about 12 to 14,000 euro in any case. She got awarded by the judge. And in the judgment, I've read up on this since, in the judgment, the judge expressed his opinion, rightly or wrongly, and I'm not really interested, by the way, at this point in time, to 
discuss whether this judge's position was reasonable or fair or anything like that and whether you know the the judgment would have been different if the allegation had been going the other way and all of those things are very interesting and can be discussed what i want to discuss is even looking at what the judge said because the judge said that in a normal marriage you would expect it to be uh, a certain closeness between the two spouses and part of that are sexual relations so it is reasonable going into a marriage to expect that there will be sexual relations and to then not get that for 21 years the judge decided was a, an unreasonable deprivation being put on the woman and as a result he awarded her the damages that he awarded and you can disagree with that or you can agree with that but what is more important than that what is much more important than that in my opinion is that this guy completely misinterpreted the conclusion that the judge presented and the judgment that the judge handed down and thought that this was some sort of an endorsement to sexual intercourse without consent and nothing could be further from the truth because if you look at the judgment that was actually handed down it is clear that the man wasn't convicted wasn't being forced to now have sexual intercourse with his wife was he of course not his wife was deemed to have been in a right to expect certain things from a marriage was deemed to be in her right to be very disappointed was deemed to have been wronged in some sort of a way but the compensation that was being imposed was financial even though the judge agreed that in those 20 years of marriage or 21 years whatever it was there should have been normally sexual intercourse between the spouses even then the judgment was not to force this to happen now against either of the spouses will but simply to award financial compensation and this is where the biggest part of your cognitive dissonance actually lies even in these circumstances in this particular case in this particular judgment there was still never going to be a question of somebody being forced to engage in sexual intercourse against their will and if you can't get that through your thick skull then i'm sorry but you're going to get video responses like this one whether you like it or not